How you doing today, YouTube? This is D Nasty Karibo, seven seven twenty seven. I know it's been forever since I've done a deck profile. Uh, honestly, I've been busy with things like school, work, and everything, and, and I've been testing out a lot of different decks. Not a whole lot, but you know, just getting a good grasp of the format. I'm really liking the rabbit deck right now. Um, props to Bobby Break and everybody who's topping with it, especially with YCS Brighton. It just recently won. So I'm going to show you out the deck. One of the main things you're going to see first with the deck is that there is no tour guide. And that's mainly because even though I know they're worth the investment, I just don't have the money to be dishing out for tour guides right now. I'm really trying to save to buy stuff I need to buy. I need to buy a new laptop. I need to buy a new car. Maybe after the new ban list, if they didn't get touched at all, then I'll definitely buy them, especially coming into Nats and everything. All right, so here's the deck. First off, I obviously have... Three rescue rabbits and three sabersauruses, three cabazals. Um, I guess we all know that's pretty self explanatory. That's like rabbit 101 things. And next, where you would usually see the tour guides, uh, I think you'll see at Brighton that they were running a combination of three guaybas or they were running three thunder kings. Me not running the tour guides, and it uh, does give me room. That I can go ahead and run both. We all know that Thunder King's broken. And we all know that Guaiba, you use it with Forbidden Lands, Book of Moon, Enemy Controller. It's really good. Next, I have two Maxis. Um, I'm thinking about getting a third one. But for right now, two has been very stable. Since I'm not running the Tour Guides, I can run my tech. The only tech that I really have in the deck, and that's Double Fossil Dina. This card is almost like a win condition for me. It honest if they're supers, I know I need secrets. They honestly shut down so many decks right now. They're almost a one card answer for Zen Main sometimes. They answer Agent, which is Rabbit's basically worst matchup in my opinion. Uh Plants Chaos. Need I say more? Locks down the gorge when you have a Lagia play. Just retarded. Sometimes I have Monster Reborn. And I'll just choose a Fossil Dino over Thunder King just because Fossil Dino is so good and I can protect it. The last couple of monsters that I do have is Grandma, Spirit Reaper, Sangan, and Gores. Um, Gores is the nuts. Spirit Reaper is really good right now, especially versus the Mirror. I won't even waste time trying to, uh, you know, side it for the Mirror. And Grandma is the nuts, especially versus Zen Mains and the other Tour Guy plays. Mmm. The two threes lets me get to a levier sometimes pretty easily. I don't have the levier right now, but I'm probably about to trade a librarian to get it back because levier is just too good, especially when you have cards like mind control, enemy controller, and things like that. Now for the spell lineup, I have three forbidden lands. One of them's a uh, Spanish. We all know this card's probably the key, one of the key cards in the deck. Some people hate this card more than the actual. Like Guaybas and Thunder Kings because in the Fossil Diner because they know with this card I can protect them. Next I have Double Econ. Um, that combination good with the Guaybas. You know, need I say more? Also protects the Evolves. Then I have a Dark Hole, Book of Moon, Mind Control, one MST, and uh, German Monster Reborn. Um, I was running Heavy Storm in here, but since I was setting so much with my deck, I usually found Heavy Storm more dead than often. And usually if my opponent set three more back rows, I felt like Heavy Storm was just running right into a Starlight Road. I know we have to think about it more clearly now. I do have Heavy Storm in the side for like, you know, if I run into a Dark Row matchup, a GB matchup, um, maybe a rare GK. Even then, most of them are running Starlight Road anyway, so especially uh, GBs and GK. So you really need to take that into consideration. So, that's the spell lineup. Oh, and I forgot. Smashing Ground. That's also another tech that I'm testing right now. Um, it answers the Reaper that we all know kills the deck. And it answers the big monster you might have out that I don't have an answer to. Like, the Envoy or, you know, other things. Even Utopia. Alright, YouTube. Last but not least, I have the Trap lineup. I have Double Solid Warning.
I have Solemn Judgment, D Prison, Torrential, Starlight Road, and Trap Dust Shoot. Um, Solemn Warning, even though I'm not always positive about it, it really is a good card. It stops a lot of the boss monsters that the deck can't handle. Gores, Hyperion, BLS, certain annoying synchros, Zen Mains. Solemn, Solemn Judgment is just a good card. I should be running more than one dimensional prison. I know that's probably what a lot of rabbit players and people would think. But honestly, I just don't have a second one. And honestly, I don't know what I'd take out for it. Probably a smashing ground. But the dimensional prison is really good, you know. It's definitely good at one. I can't really argue with it. I was running a mirror force. And I found myself thinking that I wish it was kind of a dimensional prison. Torrential is, even though sometimes it's a hit or miss, it's really a good card versus certain decks, especially when you're losing. That's just the truth, you know? Star Road is the nuts. When you have a Dolka and three back row, or Legia and two back row, I mean, Legia and three back row, and Trap Dust Shoot wins games. We all know that. And, uh, I think Jeff Jones co signed on that. And that's it for the Trap lineup. Next, I have um, the extra deck. It's not nothing too crazy. I have two uh, Dolkas. I have double Legia. Uh, I know some people are running three. I'm liking it at two right now. I might consider three later, but I highly doubt it. I'm running Leviathan. I'm running Agachi. I'll explain that in a little bit. Chimera Tech, Stardust, Brio, and Black Rose. And the last two, three, are Librarian, Cataster, and Armory Arm. Now, double Utopia is there just because Utopia is the boss. And in the deck, Rapid players will tell you that they understand why they run two. Leviathan and Gotcha are there purely in case I um, end up taking a three of my control, enemy control, or monster reborn. Um, same thing for Gachi. It seems kind of foolish, but just today I monster reborn their maxi and my control their earth. Because I knew he had an honest for Gachi. And I basically had two 2800 uh, Ligias. Felt pretty good to be behind that in a solemn judgment. Just throwing it out there. Chimera Tech is purely for card curries. I don't want to waste time citing it, but if I ever do need room, I have no problem taking it out. Whenever the new set comes out, I am going to be running a Chaos Numbers Utopia because I might, you know, the list goes on, possibilities with that card. And the Synchros, the Synchros are purely here only because in case I do take a tuner, Stardust is there for the Starlight Road and Brio Black Rose are there. Armory Arm will probably be the first thing to go once I get my Levier back. I've gone through um, five levy airs. <laughs> Every time I get them, I just get rid of them because I don't have tour guide, you know. So, you know, I'll get levy air back and probably drop armory arm. It hasn't really helped out either. Cataster and a uh, librarian are here. Cataster is amazing, and librarian is amazing versus the plant matchup. I feel really good going into that sometimes versus plants. So, you know, that's basically the extra deck. And last but not least is my side deck. Um, some of the side cards in here are test and I'll explain them. But they're all pretty good. I have only one Cyber Dragon. Double Effect Veiler. Double Gemini Imp. Double DD Warrior Lady. Double D Fisher. I have Heavy Storm. I have MST. Leeching the Light. Double Bottomless and a Mirror Force. That is 15 cards by my count. Thank God. Sometimes I actually slip up and have 14 or 16. Cyber Dragons there purely for the card cream matchup. Maybe a rare GB, but nothing else. I usually don't catch myself sliding it too much. Double Veil are just added back purely because I think Insectors and Windups are about to get really big. They're going to be part of the most popular Tier 2 deck. I think they're going to be like the Dark Worlds of White Six Kansas. And they can only go up from there. And Valor completely shuts down in sectors, and it completely shuts down the whole wind-up hand drop thing that people will try to sack you with. Gemini Imps is there purely for Dark Worlds. I might take it out, purely because I think the Dimensional Fisher and the DD Warrior Ladies will get the job done by themselves. But for right now, they're in there until I find replacements. I'm probably going to drop them for two DD Crows, or just to slow down that wind-up and insector matchup. And uh, it also kind of hurt the Dark World matchup, but not really, you know. Double DD Warrior Lady is also the nuts. It's amazing against the monster you can't get rid of, obviously. It's really good against Zen Mains. This is the one card answer to Zen Mains that I really have come to respect way more commonly. Sometimes when I do side out, Cabazol, a Cabazol, a Saber Source, and a Rabbit, I'll add in two DD Warrior Ladies because they're just so amazing. 
Um, Dimension Fisher, we all know how good that is. It stops the Max C, and it kills the other opponent's deck, especially if they're running any type of Grave Reliant deck. Heavy Storm is there, just in case I run into any deck that lays a lot of back rows. I can't really defend it that much, but I do side into it commonly, especially Game 3. And I run one more MST, a Leeching. The Leeching is for Agent matchup, obviously. I've yet to just pull off the nuts with the Leeching card yet, but when I side into more Leechings, I seem to clump draw them when they don't matter. And when I don't have them, I don't have them, and I wish I had them. So I'm only running one right now. Bottomless is amazing because it's the answer to Venus. It's a one-card answer to some of the cards you can't get rid of. Well, I can get rid of some of the cards, but sometimes you don't want to waste cards getting rid of them. You'd rather just bottomless and go ahead and remove from play. And this Mirror Force is honestly just filler. Sometimes I like to side it in, especially if it's a Game 3, just because we all know people can play in the Mirror Force, and it's really unfortunate for them. That's really um, all I have to say about the side deck. I'm just tr probably trying to find room for Duty Crows once the uh, new set comes out, because I think I think Insectors and Windups are going to, not so much Windups, but I know Insectors are probably going to be big. People are going to try to force tour guides in in sectors. While that's a good idea, it's honestly not even necessary. But I'm not going to get on that right now. So that's basically my deck profile. There's not really too much more I can really say about it. I'm really liking the deck. I'm going to go to the Extravaganza in New Orleans with my friend Mike. And I'm going to enjoy playing the deck there. I'll definitely put up an update video let you know how I do YouTube. Um, I appreciate y'all tuning in. I'll try to upload more videos. I'm thinking about doing more format videos. Or just like the current Yu-Gi-Oh! format in general, in my opinion. Um, if y'all think that's a good idea, you know, you can comment on my video. You can subscribe or you could like it. Things like that. I appreciate all the support from y'all YouTube. This is uh, D-Nasty Karibo.